Hello and welcome to Jurassic Reviews. On this episode, we'll be taking a look at one of the three medium-sized carnivores in Kenner's Series 2 line for the first film. That figure is the Utah Raptor. The Utah Raptor was released in 1994 for 1899 and included a collector's card and three pieces of capture gear. This early Cretaceous dinosaur was another that never appeared in the film and was only just recently discovered prior to the film and the toys. It stands about 8.5 inches tall and is about 15.5 inches long. Compared to the humans, which I'll actually show you later in this video, this thing towers over them, maybe a bit more so than the actual dinosaur would have in real life. It was big, but I think it was only a little bit bigger than the size of the Velociraptors in the film. But I could be wrong there. First, let's take a look at the sculpt, which is pretty awesome looking. The one thing that always stood out to me on this figure was the massive sickle claws. They look like they could do some damage. This isn't really an accurate representation of the actual dinosaur, being way too big and bulky with odd proportions, but it still makes a great figure. The majority of this figure uses rubber to give it realistic feeling skin as it's described on some of the Jurassic Park boxes. I have mentioned in past videos how I really like figures that include this, and the same applies here. I think it makes it a better figure overall. The only areas that do not feature the rubber skin are the arms and legs. Throughout the entire figure there's a ton of great texture work. Folds on the skin and scales can be found throughout it. It's really well done. The legs in particular look great to me, with all the little scales along the toes. The paint job on this figure is also pretty good. The main color is orange, but it is also covered with black spots and stripes and other weird shapes throughout the body. It's sort of a camo looking paint job. Under its neck, belly, and tail, it's painted white and both the fingernails and toenails are painted black. On its right leg, you'll find the JP mark. This one's number is 22. Looking at the head, you'll find its white teeth, pink tongue, and mouth, and really striking pink eyes. So yeah, it has a solid paint job, one that gives me jungle or tiger-like vibes. In terms of articulation, it sort of has the standard offerings, with one nice little extra. The arms can move, just back and forth, but they have a nice range to them. The legs can move, but they are tied to the action feature, so they are a little limited. Unless you use the action feature, then they're a little bit more movable. The coolest bit of articulation is on the feet. You can actually move the large claws, something I never even noticed until more recently. Granted, they can't move a whole lot, but it's still a neat inclusion nonetheless. Unfortunately, due to this figure being made of rubber, the jaws don't have a joint to move them. But since they are rubber, they can bend to open and close. They just don't stay closed. The same can be said for the tail. Since it's rubber, you can bend it in various directions. The action feature is called Kick Slash Action on the box. This feature is done by pulling back the legs, which lock them into place. There's a button under the tail that you press, which causes the legs to spring forward and the dinosaur to let out a scream. This is a cool feature that works great for knocking over other figures, though be careful using it a lot. These are known to break easily. A downside to this feature and the electronics is the added weight to the front portion of the figure, where the battery compartment is located. This added weight does not allow the figure to stand on its legs on its own. It instead needs to be on all fours. This is not a huge deal, as it still looks cool in this position. This figure would have one repaint, found in the Lost World toy line. This version would be exclusive to Target and only available in the US. This version makes a few changes besides just being repainted, so it's more of a retool. It ditches the electronics entirely and is made of a harder feeling rubber than the first release, so it's not as flexible. It also included a human dino tracker figure and capture gear, though different capture gear from the first. The main difference, of course, is the paint. It's a much darker figure overall, sporting a yellowish brown color with black stripes along its body, arms, and legs. 
There's also one long black stripe that runs from the back of its head all the way down to the tail. Its neck, belly, and tail also see a slight change with the color being more beige. The teeth and mouth are the most similar aspects paint-wise, though the mouth on the Lost World one may be just a tad bit darker. Another change is that instead of pink eyes, this one has light green eyes, which contrasts well with the dark paint job. Its articulation and action features remain the same, though without the dinosaur scream during the action feature. In terms of rarity, these figures are both rare figures. The Series 2 Utah Raptor can usually be had for $40 to $50 loose, and $150 or more in its box. So while it is rare, it is probably the more common of the three medium-sized carnivores from the line. The Lost World one is just a little harder to find and more valuable than the Series 2 one, despite the lack of electronics. It's released in the US only, and being a Target store exclusive have to do with this. Loose, it can be had for about the same as the Series 2 one, so $40 to $50, maybe a little more. In its box, it'll probably fetch over $200 nowadays. Like always, these prices are not official. You can always find them for more or less. Before I give my score on these figures, let's do a quick size comparison. Here's the Series 2 Utah Raptor with a Kenner 4-inch human and a Mattel 3 3 quarter scale human. Here it is next to the Baryonyx. Here it is with the Young T-Rex. And finally, here it is with the adult Tyrannosaurus Rex. For a rating out of 10, I give the Series 2 release an 8 out of 10, and the Lost World version a 7 out of 10. They are both great figures, but I think I prefer the Series 2 version for its paint job and electronic features, but really picking up one or the other is fine. Though I think you are much more likely to come across the Series 2 version anyway. The movable sickle claws are an awesome highlight to this figure, and it's basically a blown up Velociraptor from the films, so it was fun to play with when I was little. These make a great addition to any Jurassic collection. I recommend them. And that does it for the Series 2 Utah Raptor. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.